All right, so it's been a while since I did any videos with my wife's uh, 2022 FTR base. Um, so what I bought for her this week was this nice carbon cow. Um, what I'm going to do is Serge is making me some little triangle uh, stickers that match this. Um, so we're going to put that right there so it looked really nice. Then I bought this exhaust bracket from Thomas Cope. Um, if you go on Facebook, any of the Facebook groups and forums, he's there. Uh, but basically this is a nice piece of aluminum bracket. Um, and you can take or get rid of your rear, rear sets if you're going to keep this style of exhaust that runs up here. So obviously if you're running a cow, you don't need rear sets because nobody's sitting up here. So it looks kind of silly having rear sets and a cow. So it does clean up the bike really, really nice, just removing the rear sets. So that's the first thing. Second thing, battery. So the battery that's in this bike actually failed a couple months after I bought the bike. And so what I did was, I took the battery out of my FTR um, that had sitting on a shelf because I went to anti gravity. There was videos about it and everything, so not recommending them. But anyway, this has an anti gravity lithium battery in it. So I stuck the battery off of this on my shelf. When this battery failed, I took this battery out and put my battery for my 2019 in here. So here it is, 2024, and the battery just started failing me. So in all fairness, tender has been plugged in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a test fire start on her. So you can hear how it starts. Give a second with the fuel pump prime. Come over here so you can get the exhaust. All right, so I'm just gonna crank it up, see how fast or slow it cranks. So it wasn't too bad. Um, but what happened was I didn't have the tender on it. The other day we went for a, we wanted to go for a ride. The tender wasn't on it for maybe a day or so, and it wouldn't start. So I had to jump start her bike, and then it's been starting slow ever since. But the battery's from 2019 from that thing, so it's time to upgrade. So for hers, what we did was we did the NLP 14. So it's the Noco battery. Um, it's the same battery that I'm running in the Challenger. Then I also have the Genius One Noco. Um, or a charger with their SAE adapter so it's this adapter that plugs in here so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna unbox this video or this uh, this battery here I'm going to plug it into the tender and make sure that this battery is also green because I don't know how long this has been sitting on the shelf at Amazon but I think this is like 120 bucks shipped to my door so we're gonna pull stock battery out weigh it Weigh this battery and make sure this battery is green. And I'm going to do a restart on that bike. And now we got that out of the box. Um, so the NOCO comes with obviously the user manual, some foam because some of the batteries you need foam when you put the cover back on. Uh, it comes with an Allen wrench for these bolts. So the nice thing about these is the terminals, you have three different points of contact for your terminals. This piece here, um, on the challengers especially, you have to remove this piece. This is just a, a block, so some battery holders have a thing that comes up over here, so you need this in, in here. Um, some battery holders have a thing that comes in below this, so you can just take this Allen key out and this whole block comes off. Also, what's really cool about NOCO is, unlike other brands that I won't talk about, they come with these things. So these are basically just big Legos and you can stack however you need to fit your battery box. So obviously we got all these. So I think uh, I'll end up using a couple of these. Um, obviously as you see they're different thicknesses. Um, so the thickness this way is about the same as the OEM battery. However height is vastly different from this from the old one. So I have hooked up to my tender. Um, she is showing red, flashing red. So we're gonna let it sit for a little while. However, what I want to do is weigh it. So as you can see, zero, zero, zero. 
I put it on, it's not even registering. So this thing is stupid light. So what we're gonna do is while that's charging, we're gonna pull this battery out. So what you need is a six millimeter Allen and a ratcheting screwdriver. So basically, and a 10 millimeter socket. So basically you have an Allen key here, here, and here. And then once you get it off, there's two 10 millimeter screws, um, bolts with a Phillips head screw. And what a lot of people don't want to know is, if you come under here, you have, let's see, I'm trying to get on the camera. <clears throat> you have an Allen here, tool here, that's strapped up behind your oil filter. And so this is a six millimeter. And on the other side of it, is a Phillips head. So if you ever have to remove your battery or take your battery out, you have the tool right there. Also, that tool is the same size as your drain plugs. So if you need to change the oil or something like that, you're on the road, this tool can do it. Not a lot of people know it's there, but that's your FTR toolkit. So let's get this cover off and we'll get the stock battery out and we'll weigh it. All right, stock battery's out. So basically what you do is you take whatever stacks of these you want and then you kind of line it up right there. So let's see. So the scale is on. Let's see what this thing weighs. We are at also zero. Huh. It's not really registering anything. Well that's kind of annoying. Alright, so if you look up the spec. Get rid of my stupid cheap spin. So specs on this thing, um, this is around, I think I want to say 12 pounds is what this thing weighs. This thing, a pound, if that. So, uh, so when you install one of these batteries, you're basically cutting off around 10 pounds off the front of that bike. So... <clears throat> That is still flashing red, so this has obviously been sitting for a while. So I think what I'm going to do is just throw it in the bike, and then I'll hook up the tender straight to the bike. And then when it shows green, then we'll start it. All right, battery's in. Use these four millimeter screws with your Allen that uh, Noco provided. It's nice brass screws. You don't have to use the foam because your cover already has some foam and it comes with these spacers, unlike that other brand that's in that bike. So that's all set to go. We have our Genius One uh, tender plugged back into the OEM tender port, which a lot of people don't understand or know that all Indians come with a tender port. So in the FDRs, this is strapped up behind this thing. It's taped in. Um, they has one. Challenger has one, the Scout has one, every Indian has one. So if you have an extra tender port hooked up down here, say a dealer installed or something like that, you don't need it. It's not necessary. So this one's already fused power that feeds into the wiring system. It's already there. Uh, read your owner's manual, it's there. So obviously your cover just pops right back on. Um, don't torque these very tight um, I actually broke one off of my FTR um, I broke it right there but we're gonna put all those back in gonna wait for this thing to turn green and then we're gonna start the bike so there have been people saying that they want to put the NL NLP 20 in the FTR um, because per the website the dimensions fit um, they clearly don't so this is a 20 battery out of my Challenger. So this is the NLP. So the replacement for this battery was an NLP 20. So if you look at the width, it's clearly not gonna fit. So this is a 14, this is a 20 comparison. Height wise, you could easily do it because obviously the stackable shims. Width wise, it's not gonna happen. There's no way they are gonna fit the bigger 20 battery into the 14 battery, um, unfortunately, because it would be nice to have a little bit more cranky amps. But that's what you can do. So obviously, Indian Challenger battery, FTR battery, and the Scout battery is about the same size. But I'm growing a little impatient. We are still flashing red down here, but let's just see what she does. 
So we'll see. So we're at 13 volts. Um, obviously still plugged in. First crank. So it did fire off a little quicker. Do it again. So much quicker. So this thing isn't even green. The battery is not fully charged yet and the crank was almost instant. Um, so yeah, so shave 10 pounds off the bike, better cranking power, and yeah, what else could you ask for? So I'll throw a link in the description for this SAE adapter uh, because NOCO has this pri proprietary thing. Um, these batteries do require a special lithium tender. It doesn't have to be NOCO, but your typical battery tender like this will not work on these batteries. The neat thing about these batteries is you can do your normal 12 volt battery, AGM or lithium or six volt. You basically just hit this button um, and it reads the battery and does what it needs to do. Obviously this will turn green. I'm very happy with this thing. I think it's like 25 bucks and I think this is $10. I'll put a link in the description for both of these and the link in the description for that battery. Um, like I said, I have the 20 in here and obviously the ports up here. I've been very happy with it. It's not letting me down. This one saved a little bit more weight than this one did. Uh, when this battery, the second battery from AG, uh, when it eventually lets me down, I'll switch this to a NOCO too. The warranty is pretty good and I think the battery was $125 shipped. But $125, save 10 pounds and have better starting. What more do you ask for? Alright, I can end the video there. It's been a while since I did a little rev on this. Um, everybody knows what a straight pipe up here sounds like, but not many people know what a toast uh, slip on sounds like with the gas stall. So, it's just the perfect amount of rowdiness. Melissa is not a big fan of the overly loud full systems, otherwise I have a full system on here. Um, she likes this system, it's just enough. It's it's nice mellow sound. Um, so if anybody is interested in the toe slip-on, um, it's a good slip-on. Obviously, all billet, billet mounts, welds and everything with the same material link pipe as the cat and everything, so everything will eventually discolor the same all the way up, but all hand-built. It's a very super nice slip on with a nice mellow sound. That's not overly annoying like that thing is. And I think that'll do it with this patio change video. I'm not sure what the next thing I'll do to this bike is. We might do a carbon front cowl. Not quite sure, but the rear cowl definitely made it look better. So I might keep looking at this thing and drinking a little bit of bourbon and want the full carbon effect and eventually do this in carbon. So, alright guys, thanks for watching.